number of COVID deaths per occupied bed. They are evenly split between states led by Democratic and Republican governors, which supports the proposition. This is not a blue state, red state issue. It is a huge national tragedy for the country. Senator Menendez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Dickin, last June, I, I led uh, my House and Senate colleagues in a letter to then Secretary Asnar, uh, Azar and then uh, Administrator Verma pleading for more resources, guidance, and support for nursing homes. Uh, at the time, New Jersey had already been on the front lines of the pandemic for over two months, two months when we were fighting in the dark uh, against an invisible enemy, two months where New Jerseyans suffered immeasurable losses and pain. In that letter, I called for a comprehensive national testing plan. We didn't get it. I asked for a strategy to ensure our nursing homes had sufficient PPE. I asked for a plan on shorting staffages, uh, staffing shortages and for how to care for COVID-19 positive residents. And I called for greater resources to improve reporting and communication. We didn't get uh, all of those things. And when we did get something, it came slowly and for many too late. So, so that we can learn from the past, can you talk to us about the harm inflicted by the failure to put in place a national testing plan last spring? Yeah, thank you. Um, and, and you're right, that is part of GEO's broader work examining the federal response to uh, the pandemic. Um, GEO has also recommended that there be a, a national testing strategy and that um, has not yet uh, been implemented. Uh, that's, that's key for several reasons. The national testing strategy would help better uh, target um, information on what resources and expertise can be used to try to, to control or prevent outbreaks. It also could assure more consistency so that there's working at state, federal, and, and private entities working on common goals uh, and that there'd be common information that could have more transparency. Thank you. Dr. Gifford, I, I recently introduced the PREPARE Act and sent a letter with Congressman Pascrell to the administration requesting that infection control practices be improved in nursing homes to combat the future spread of COVID and other viruses. Your plan also calls for a new focus on infection control by adding additional requirement to the infection preventionist position that is required in all facilities. Could you elaborate on your plan and how these changes would help uh, provide a healthier environment for the residents uh, you serve? Thank you, Senator Mendez, for um, all of your efforts on both TPE and infection control. Um, we uh, uh, definitely have supported the infection preventionist and, um, program and requirements since the beginning, I think what we've learned is that you need to tailor that infection preventionist to the needs of the facility. A large facility with three, 400 beds needs more than one person. A 20 bed facility in a rural community does not need the same amount. Um, you also have a facility that takes care of highly acute illness uh, and very sick individuals may need more infection preventionists than those that uh, have less uh, acuity in there. And so we would strongly support it being evidence-based. You also don't necessarily want to say it has to be one person because if that person gets sick or is out on vacation or not working those days, you want to have good coverage of infection prevention throughout. So this should be able to be covered by multiple people. So we are actually asking for an evidence-based approach to addressing this infection preventionist in a nursing home. And one final question. Last week, uh... The AHCA sent a letter to the administration asking for next steps for vaccinations at nursing homes. Now, last week we learned that in New Jersey, only about half of our nursing home staff are vaccinated. Since the pharmacy partnership with retail pharmacies and nursing homes is drawing to a close, it seems to me we need to be sure we can still get people vaccinated in these facilities. What are, what are some of the more creative ways the federal government can partner with our nursing home partners to reach the stated goal of 75% of staff vaccinated by June 30th? Well, I think the initial uh, plan they had use, working with uh, the retail pharmacies and getting the vaccine out there was a highly successful program. I think the challenge now is getting vaccine out. There just isn't enough vaccine still coming out and being allocated into the program. And so, um, 
no matter how innovative a program you have, there is no vaccine in the federal or uh, being allocated out other than a handful of states. We need to not let the gains that we have seen with vaccinations flip. It's also clear, I think, as you heard from um, uh, Ms. Ramos, that uh, you need to have multiple people sitting down and listening and talking to staff and residents about what their concerns are with the vaccine um, so that they can understand what's going on out there. And CDC is sort of working in that area and we support that effort. Thank you, Senator. Thank my colleague. We're gonna keep this going. Senator Crapo has been kind enough to say he will run the hearing while I run and vote. And I think I saw Senator Hassan, uh, perhaps she'll be back soon. Senator Crapo, if you'll run it, I will be back very quickly. I will do so. Thank you, Senator Wyden. 